Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show and in this episode I'm going to go foraging for some chestnuts and hopefully at the end take them home and roast them up. I'm here with my dog Jax, he's a little Jack Russell Terrier, he's going to join me on the foraging and hopefully you guys will enjoy coming along on the adventure with us. This here is Castanea sativa, or the sweet chestnut as we know it. The Latin word sativa means cultivated by humans. The Romans actually used the sweet chestnut, the nut itself, uh, for porridge and monks and other people have used it for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's quite easily identifiable, um, not just by its bark which has these long kind of furrows or fissures uh, like this, but actually the leaf itself. The leaf is far more easy to identify this tree. They grow to around 20 to 35 meters high and uh, the trunks can grow pretty wide up to around about two meters in diameter. Let me just show you what the leaf looks like. So this is what the leaf looks like and it's quite easily to identify the chestnut because of this kind of tooth, tooth-like edge and actually I like to think of it as like a serrated saw blade. Um, you can see that it's very, very sort of similar to the blade of a saw. Um, and that's probably one of the easiest ways to identify this tree. The leaves itself are actually fairly large. They're one of the largest leaves in the, on a trees in the UK. Um, and if I show you this one, just in comparison, this one is obviously uh, not turned yet. We are in back end of October, so this will start to drop off, turn colour and drop off soon. But here's another one, which you can see the difference. It grows incredibly huge, these leaves. Um, again, it's got that serrated edge to it. And this has got a lovely golden colour as we're now well into autumn and uh, the trees are starting to lose their leaves. That's kind of one way you can identify this tree as well as the bark obviously. But uh, the other really easy way to identify it is the actual seed or nut itself. So in the autumn months the female flowers basically develop into these spiny casings known as capules. Um, and they, these are basically a protective casing uh, for the nut itself to protect it from squirrels and things like that. And they are actually really really spiky. So generally when you're breaking these open, um, you're going to need a, a pair of gloves because these will spike you. Inside these capules is the calibium, or calibia for plural, and that's basically the nut itself. What I've got here is a couple in different stages. So trying to break these open is actually fairly difficult. And actually I find by grabbing them and twisting them, and that tends to pop open the capule there. And inside you can see the calibia which is the nuts, the actual fruiting seed of the chestnut. Now these ones are not fully developed yet, but I'll get them out anyway. They usually have about three to seven inside, and that's what they look like. That is the calibium. So here it is in different stages. This one um, I just opened, so that was not ready really, the fruiting, the nuts weren't really ready to eat. This one, as you can see on the back, has gone slightly brown, tinged brown, um, so it's fallen recently and actually been opened very, very recently, probably by a squirrel. And then this one here is very brown, the seeds have gone, they've probably been taken by a squirrel uh, or just into the ground. And actually this interior of the capule here is almost like suede, it's really really soft and furry. And actually you get that texture with the chestnut itself, it's kind of like a sweet potato texture. Okay, so I'm back from my foraging session out in the woods and I'm here in my kitchen. So I've collected some chestnuts, some sweet chestnuts, in my little oil skin pouch here. And what I'm going to do is just quickly show you how I prepare them. Um, it's a very common way of doing it, uh, but you can obviously add your own bits to it, little bits of seasoning and things like that. But I'll show you how I prepare, prepare them and then how I roast them afterwards. So 
So here is my chestnut, uh, one of the ones that I picked. And all I'm going to do is, they say you can put a cross in it, but actually I'm just going to put one long line in it just so that it splits um, and it's easy to open. And I'm going to go kind of across the grain here. I only need to push gently, I'm using just my bushcraft knife for this, uh, but you can actually use like a bread knife and just saw away just to be safer. But I'm literally just gently rocking back and forward. There we go, there's the split. I don't want to go into it too deep. And that's all you need to know. Once you can see that split there, that should be fine. And the reason you split them is because basically they can explode when they are heated up in the oven. Um, so if I squeeze that, you can actually see the, the nut itself inside. So I'm going to do that to all my chestnuts and then put them in a uh, saucepan, bring it to the simmer, and then I'll show you the roasting part. So they're all in there. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt. Just helps give it a little bit of extra flavour. And now I'm going to put that to simmer. And once it's simmering, then I'll take them out and get them on the roasting pan. So now they're ready to go in the oven, I'm going to put it on gas mark 6, which is about 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm put, probably bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes, and then they'll be ready to eat. So the chestnuts are out of the oven, they've had about 20-25 minutes and as you can see they've started to peel open. The reason you do roast them is because the shell is actually very hard to take away from the nut itself. So roasting it just makes that shell easier to put away. And also being a traditional kind of winter, well autumnal um, snack, it's quite nice to have them and eat them warm. So I'm going to let those set for about 10 minutes or so just to let them cool down a bit and then I can eat them. Okay, so they've cooled down, and I can now, the shell pulls away really easily. And it's obviously got this little kind of fairy under part to the, just under the shell, but you can actually peel that away and it's fine. And there is the real juicy bit, and that's really, really nice. And it's got the texture of kind of sweet potato, uh, but it's really nice. It's kind of sweet, really, that's why they call it the sweet chestnut. But it's very, very nice. And actually, it's packed full of carbohydrates, protein and fats, so really good for you especially on those cold days and you're looking to forage for some wild food, sweet chestnuts away to go.